this PowerPoint slideshow uh, or Google slide deck, as the case may be, uh, is going to give a general overview to uh, James Joyce's life and works, and in particular, how they uh, connect to the work that we're going to be reading in class, which is called Dubliners. Um, <clears throat> so here's James Joyce. James uh, Augustine Aloysius Joyce. He was born in 1882 in Ireland. Uh, that's why I have a green backdrop here for Ireland. Uh, he was a celebrated novelist, short story writer, poet, teacher, and literary critic. He lived throughout Europe um, in, in Ireland in his early days and then traveled throughout Europe. Uh, he died in 1941 after a botched ulcer, ulcer surgery. Uh, he is widely considered to be one of the great writers of the modernist period in the late 19th and 20th centuries. He was raised in an upper middle class family, um, but that upper middle class family eventually ended up being a lower class family uh, because his father was a uh, spendthrift and somewhat of a ne'er-do-well and ended up losing most of the family's status and wealth. Uh, he started out at a, at a fairly expensive uh, public Catholic school. Public schools uh, <clears throat> were kind of based on re residents uh, and so they were uh, <clears throat> it, well, well on the one hand they were public on the other hand you still had to sort of pay to attend them. Uh, they weren't technically private schools. Um, he started out in, in a fairly well-to-do public Catholic school, but eventually ends up having to shift and move to uh, a lower-class school, uh, and that impacted Joyce the person and Joyce the writer. Uh, but eventually he becomes uh, obsessed with a career as a writer. Um, his most significant works, uh, the short story collection Dubliners, which is what we're going to be reading, that was published in 1914. Uh, and then three main novels, Portrait of the Artist as a Young Man, which was published in 1916, uh, Ulysses, which is uh, his masterpiece in 1922, uh, and then Finnegan's Wake in 1939. Um, Portrait is a sort of semi-autobiographical stream of consciousness, consciousness novel, uh, and a lot of the events from act from James Joyce's actual life find their way into the story. The character in the story, Stephen Dedalus, um, goes through a lot of the same struggles that James Joyce, the author, went through. Um, but Ulysses is a much more uh, complex book, and it's a sprawling epic um, that also brings in characters that have appeared in other works of James, by James Joyce. Uh, it was also massively controversial. All right. Um, Joyce's works are strongly influenced by his Irish background and upbringing, including the Catholic influences and the influences from religious schooling. You see this very clearly in Portrait of the Artist, uh, where he has constant conflicts with the institutions of the Catholic schools, including uh, being uh, being given beating, be beatings for things that uh, oftentimes he's not even responsible for. Um, he came to uh, maturity in an era when the Irish people were fighting for more autonomy from the British Empire um, and other writers during this time period. The most notable one is the Irish poet um, uh, William Butler Yeats, were also Irish nationalists, um, unlike Yeats, who tried to focus on the Gaelic Irish history um, Joyce didn't seem to be that particularly interested in the history of Ireland, uh, but instead was sort of focused on trying to uh, reclaim Ireland as its own country, um, regardless of its history. Uh, speaking of Irish nationalism, here's Charles Stuart Parnell. Uh, you may or may not, not know about him from uh, world history. Uh, he was the leader of the Irish, uh, of an Irish uh, nationalist Party. He was a parliamentary leader in the late 1800s. Um, he advanced the cause of Irish home rule, trying to get independence from uh, England. Uh, and so he was a prominent advocate for this from 1879 till, until 1890. Uh, he founds a group called the Irish Parliamentary Party in 1882. And he was politically uh, making some, some uh, pretty, uh, pretty good headway. Uh, until 1889, when a scandal erupts, um, a, uh, a military captain named uh, William O'Shea uh, 
uh, filed for a divorce. And divorce in Catholic Ireland um, was very rare, um, and it, it had to be certain conditions had to be met for a divorce to even be considered. And one of those con uh, considerations was adultery by one of the parties. Uh, and in his divorce filings, which took place in a court uh, during a trial, he was literally suing her for divorce. Uh, it was revealed that uh, his wife, Catherine, who went by the nickname Kitty, had a longstanding affair with Parnell, who was unmarried, uh, and that in this adulterous affair, affair uh, Parnell ended up fathering um, three of O'Shea's children. So after this revelation that Parnell and, and Kitty O'Shea had had this adulterous affair, uh, his career was essentially ruined. Um, Ireland at the time was dominated by Catholics who had strong moral views, uh, and so the average citizen, along with the members of the Catholic Church, viewed Por Parnell as some sort of an immoral person, and so his ability to lead um, was essentially uh, kind of kneecapped at that point. Um, <clears throat> so home rule, which he had been fighting for and seemed to be close at hand, ends up getting pushed back. Uh, partially because of World War I, um, Irish home rule doesn't happen until 1922. Um, he does eventually, the divorce decree is, de is granted, and uh, Parnell then marries Catherine O'Shea, uh, and Parnell himself died in 1891 of pneumonia. Um, this was influential on James Joyce's life because Joyce's father and James himself uh, both viewed Parnell as a hero who was unjustly betrayed by his party and his people. All right, here's Ireland. You can see Dublin sitting right here on the coast. Um, here's the United Kingdom. Here's England, Manchester, and Liverpool across the bay. Sorry, uh, London is down here. <clears throat> so uh, the city of Dublin is the centerpiece of the short story collection. Uh, all of the stories take place in the city of Dublin, uh, which is the city of Joyce's birth and upbringing. <clears throat> Dublin itself was a pretty significant city, um, the second largest city in the British Isles after London, and one of the more significant economic and port locations throughout Europe. Um, Joyce himself expressed some concern uh, and frustration to his friends and colleagues that Dublin had not been the feature of literary or social exposure. People weren't writing weren't writing books based in Dublin, even though Dublin was a much much bigger than other European cities um, like Venice that seemed to be the center of a uh, literary attention. Um, <clears throat> most of the stories in the collection take place in and around the center of Dublin. A uh, little map here of the various landmarks there, uh, including the River Liffey that several of the uh, characters look upon. <clears throat> um, Joyce's own upbringing influences the stories in Dubliners because most of them focus on uh, lower middle class or uh, lower class people whose jobs are mostly menial and low paying. Um, the economics of the time, uh, even though Protestants made up only about 17% of the population of Ireland, uh, most of those Protestants held positions of power in, uh, most of the positions of powers in banking and business and law and medicine were held by Protestants. Um, and so they tended to have the middle and upper classes of society and they would tend to give, uh, you know, give positions in banking or business or law or medicine to fellow Protestants. So Catholics like Joyce, oftentimes found themselves on the outside looking in. His father is a good example of this. His father at one point has a pretty good government job, but eventually loses it. Um, so the characters in the collection are often struggling, poor, or just barely getting by as a result of the economic and social stagnancy in Dublin at the time. Um, in the, one of the stories in the collection called After the Race, uh, Joyce refers to the streets of Dublin as a, quote, channel of poverty and inaction. Uh, the critic Terence Brown, who wrote an introduction to um, the centennial edition of Dubliners, claims that Dubliners is, quote, a book of churches. Um, there are lots of references to the physical buildings um, in uh, the church, the, uh, the physical church buildings um, as an important landmark. Uh, if you lived in a city like Dublin, you got, would often give directions by talking about, you know, oh, go down to the church and then take a left and it'll be two blocks after that. Um, but they're also uh, 
multiple references to priests throughout the story, um, throughout the various stories. Uh, and many of these priests are morally questionable or moral, morally dubious characters. Um, and this is probably in part a reflection of Joyce's own developing views on the church. While he grew up, he was, uh, you know, he was raised Catholic. Uh, he went to Catholic schools. He did all of the things that he was supposed to do. Um, he started to pull away from the church and begin to question uh, not only the, the church's moral and spiritual authority, but he also began to question the moral and spiritual authority of the priests who worked for the church. Um, and you can see this uh, kind of more clearly in his uh first novel, A Portrait of the Artist as a Young Man, where the main character, Stephen Dedalus, begins to struggle with both church and faith. And by the end of the story, he is uh, sort of given up going to church, uh, much to his parents' frustration. <clears throat> Dubliners is a set of short stories. Uh, and during this time period, the short story as a literary style was um, perceived in, in two different fashions. Um, li uh, literarily, that's a typo, sorry about that. Um, it was viewed to be less serious than novels, poetry, or plays. Um, but on the other hand, they were very popular in magazines, papers, and reviews. Um, literacy was rising during this time period, and people would grab disposable things like magazines or, or papers, and they would often find stories anthologized. You see this in approximately the same time period in um, American literature. Uh, you see folks uh, who are living and writing during this time, like F. Scott Fitzgerald. Fitzgerald basically made his living writing short stories that were published in uh, New newspapers, and it was kind of how he paid the bills while he sat down to write longer novels like The Great Gatsby and uh, The Beautiful and the Damned, etc. <clears throat> so uh, Joyce started writing short stories on the request of George Russell, who was an editor and one of his patrons. He kind of funded some of Joyce's endeavors. Um, he initially encouraged him to write a few sh short stories for publication in a magazine. Uh, and Joyce ended up producing 15 of them that get put together into the collection known as Dubliners. Um, he was writing them roughly at the same time that he was also writing the first draft of his novel, Portrait of the Artist, which at the time was called Stephen Hero. Uh, he eventually kind of changes the format and structure, and Stephen Hero becomes a portrait of the artist, but many of the events stay the same. Um, according to Joyce, the virtue of the short story is the ability to qu offer, quote, fragments of human experiences that may or may not amount to defining moments. Um, <clears throat> so Joyce uh, would give us these little glim glimpses inside these short, short stories of characters' lives, uh, oftentimes engaged in day-to-day -day activities, um, and then oftentimes re resulting in some sort of a realization. We'll talk about those in a couple of the slides at the end. Um, he will go into much more depth into his characters' lives in his novels. Um, <clears throat> so the stories in Dubliners are collected, connected by their location, which is Dublin. Uh, and they're also often connected by themes or socioeconomic facts, specific motifs, and other literary elements. Uh, one place that they are not connected, though, is through characters. Uh, the characters never interact with one another. Unless you consider the city of Dublin to be a character, which some critics do, there's no connecting thread that draws the characters uh, in one story to the characters in another, except for the fact that they live in the same town. Uh, however, Joyce does develop some fondness for his characters, and he ends up reusing some of these characters later on in his um, novel, 1922 novel, Ulysses. He also reutilizes characters from um, Portrait of the Artist as a Young Man. Um, all right, so let's talk about a couple of stylistic things. James Joyce is usually one of the top names on the list when you are asked to give examples of modernist literary writers. Modernism in literature is a movement that begins in the early 1900s, uh, and it's a rebellion against the traditional styles and methods of storytelling. Um, the traditional linear, uh, the, the, uh, the plot where everything rises, 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 then there's a climax, and then there's some falling action in a denouement, and everything's told in a clear-cut way, oftentimes using an omnipotent narrator or clear understandings of what characters are going on. All of that was kind of the norm. Um, 
when modernism kicked in and started going the other direction and saying, no, we're going to do the opposite of this in an attempt to try to uh, exp explore what goes on in the human mind. The human mind doesn't work in many cases in a linear fashion. So these modernists decided to abandon clear-cut stories, abandon the, the standards of verse and structure, and abandon a linear narration, and instead their stories were often fragmented using different and new methods of expression like stream of consciousness and the use of images and symbols, alternating timelines, alternating points of view, um, and the, the world post-World War I is considerably more fragmented than it was before. Uh, there's a lot of uncertainty and a lack of clarity about, you know, what our purpose is as a human society or as human culture, um, and modernism kind of impacts that. So some crucial modernist writers uh, include Joyce. Uh, many include Emily Dickinson and Walt Whitman, even though they're pre-World War I writers. Um, T.S. Eliot is usually on the list. Joseph Conrad, who writes a little earlier but kind of fits that list. Ezra Pound, E.E. E. Cummings, Virginia Woolf, Marcel Proust, all examples of folks that are generally categorized as modernists. Um, <clears throat> Joyce is also, though, sometimes lumped in with the realists. Um, and while modernism is about the style, uh, realism is about the subject. So the realists were trying to depict the world as it really was by instead of focusing on uh, the wealthy and the extravagant and the high class, they focused on the mundane, the everyday experiences of people, um, generally in middle or lower class society. Um, realism really took hold in American literature. You see it in Twain. You see it in Steinbeck, Jack London's uh, stories about uh, survival are in that category, Upton Sinclair, um, George Eliot, and then Joyce is often included in that list as well. Dubliners is definitely one of the more significant moments where Joyce's realism shines through because almost all of the characters are middle and lower class, and most of the stories are fairly straightforward, everyday experiences. Um, <clears throat> in a letter to uh, Grant Richards, who was trying to publish his works, uh, Joyce famously self-attributes uh, what he calls a, sky, a style of scrupulous meanness to his stories. Uh, and this is often analyzed and, and in some cases misinterpreted. Uh, many people take meanness in the sense to mean that he's being mean, that he is being uh, unkind, um, but he means it in a more common uh, in what would have been the more common way of understanding it in the English of his time period, which doesn't mean unkind, but instead like a lack of generosity or stinginess. In this particular sense, he's talking about how much he is writing. Instead of writing a long novel to tell a story, um, he is engaged in meanness in the sense that he is using a parody of words to try to express strong ideas. Um, we take scrupulous to mean a sense of morality or rightness. Um, so the scrupulous meanness, he's really trying to get at the fact that he wants to create a very powerful effect, like by evaluating the lives of characters in a minimal amount of words. Um, and by increasing the amount of symbolic value in the stories, he kind of get more bang for his buck in the short stories. Um, a concept that's really important to understand in Joyce in general and in Dubliners in particular uh, is the concept that he he actually develops for literature called epiphany. Um, in the uh, in the the Christian concept of epiphany, the epiphany was the revelation of Jesus's divinity to the the three wise men, the Magi, uh, and then in Christian thought, it also has come to mean. Um, the manifestation of a hidden message of salvation, having salvation revealed to you uh, in some fashion. Joyce doesn't mean it in a religious sense. He means it in a new sense. Um, he uses the word epiphany and he drops the capital E. Um, he co-ops the word. Uh, an epiphany is the moment where a character has a sudden insight or realization that changes their understanding of themselves or their comprehension of the world. Characters in Joyce's novels have these moments where they see or, or experience or hear or just have a feeling and suddenly everything has changed. Um, and so we're going to look throughout um, the stories in Dubliners for epiphanies. Joyce told a friend that uh, the stories in Dubliners were meant to be a series of epicleti on paralysis. Um, the use of epicleti 
is a, a particular uh, is a has a particular Catholic concept from the Greek word. Um, the epiclesis is the invocation of the Holy Spirit to turn the bread and the wine wine into Eucharist at Mass. Um, but Joyce means it in a more uh, non-religious sense, um, something that is disruptive or alien or causes change. Um, <clears throat> but the paralysis part is the important part there. He seems to be indicating that there are cases of literal and metaphorical and spiritual paralysis running through the stories of the collection. Um, and that's something that we should definitely keep an eye out for. Um, where are characters paralyzed in a physical sense, in a metaphorical sense, or in an in emotional, spiritual sense? Um, <clears throat> Joyce has also been uh, quoted as saying that the uh, the stories <clears throat> are arranged roughly in the order of the four ages of man, which would be childhood, adolescence, maturity, and then public life. Um, so consider whether or not you can find those divisions, where which are the stories of childhood, which are the stories of adolescence. Um, and if he did divide them chronologically, where's the breaking off point? Um, which which uh, story shows the transition from childhood to adolescence, for example? Uh, last but not least here, uh, here's James Joyce again, uh, cool hat in the picture on the left, mad wordsmithing skills, writes the most influential novel of the century, uh, knew how to rock an eye patch, um, so much respect to James Joyce. He had to wear the eye patch, by the way, because he had continuing ongoing issues with the vision in his left eye. Uh, I think he had 10 or 12 surgeries on it in his life, um, but was mostly blind in that eye, and so he often had to wear the eye patch to help save the vision when he had it. So, uh, cool eye patch, bro. Um, all right, we'll be talking about Dubliner soon.